Hello, mysterious person behind the screen, and welcome back to our Star Wars commentaries with me and Isaac. Hello there. Um, and this time we are launching into the second trilogy, or I guess the first trilogy, um, the the original trilogy that started it all. Um, and to start off, we are kicking off with Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. Now, this is is important to to note. We are we're covering the the most recent version of the film. There's about 50 different versions of this film, and indeed all three of them. Um, but we're covering the 2019 Disney Plus version that's that was on Blu-ray and last year and everything. The uh, the most recent up-to-date version. So, without further ado. If you'd like to sync this up with the 2019 copy Blu-ray of Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope, or if you're a perfectionist and you just call it Star Wars, yeah. uh, put the film to the start and press play now. Let's begin with part four. So um, for this film, I'm going to read the crawl in uh, the fat controller's voice from <laughs> Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> that actually can. Oh, that should be interesting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Star Wars. <laughs> Episode four. A new warp. <laughs> It is a period of shiver war. Rebel spaceships striking from a hidden base have won their first victory against the evil Galactic Empire. During the battle, rebel spies managed to steal secret plans to the Empire's ultimate weapon, the Death Star, an armoured space station with enough power to destroy an entire planet. Pursued by the Empire's sinister agents, Princess Leia races home aboard her starship, custodian of the stolen plans that can save her people and restore freedom to the galaxy. You're a very naughty Empire. <laughs> I hope oh, I can trust amazing. you to behave when you next come out of this shed. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Ah, uh, And what a simple crawl as well. What a simple, to the point... Yeah, crawl. well... Well, interestingly enough, um, the episode four in A New Hope yeah, uh, title yeah. that came with it, that wasn't until 1981 when they re-released the film. Yeah, yeah. Um... So technically, Empire was the first to have uh, an episode number on it and a subtitle. Yeah. So I, so I wonder, when it came up with episode five, I wonder if people were like, wait, what? Yeah, <laughs> what, that... happened to, what, what happened to one to three? <laughs> yeah, I always think that as well, especially because, like you say, Empire would be the first one, and it's the middle of the trilogy, so it's not like yeah. there, it's not like there was a precedent for it uh, with the first mm, one. But yeah, yeah it is it is, uh, it is interesting. That opening shot is stunning. Forty oh, years is. later, it absolutely is, and it, it, again, visual storytelling. It tells you everything you need to know about who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. Every and how much power thing. each one has because yeah, yeah. Um, the rebel spaceship is tiny compared to the Empire and they're easily defeated. Absolutely, yeah. It's in it, And it... also, um, I can um, just to go to Doctor Who a bit, apparently Tom Baker, Graham Williams, Anthony Reid and quite a few of the visual effects team at the time went to go see this when it came out. And ah. um, yeah, I think quite a lot of them we're a bit intimidated by the effects, but they actually yeah. held their heads up high and think, you know what, we can do this as well. <laughs> yeah, well, this had quite an influence on not just Doctor Who, but sci-fi in general. Uh, everything was yeah. trying to be like Star Wars, and you can see that in the latter part of Tom Baker's era. Is uh, they, they definitely mm -hmm. started to get a bit more ambitious with everything. Some of it worked, some they of it have didn't. A... But... <laughs> yeah, because there's a lot of, um, in the Graham Williams era, there's a lot of spaceships coming over the camera, and yes, for the most part, they hold up really well. They do, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And also... Um... I think the picture quality for this has been... I don't know who did it, but was it done by Disney, I presume? Uh, this is actually interesting because the 
the 4K restoration of these, this was the only one that was done by Fox because at the time Fox oh. still still owned it. The rest of them were all done by Disney, but be, uh, this was before Disney bought Fox, so Fox still like had had all the control over this first one, um, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Yeah, because um, I remember having the 2011 Blu-ray mm. and. Um, I think you mentioned this when we did the prequels. It looked really soft, like the picture, as almost as if it was shot on digital. Yeah. Obviously, these were shot on film, so I'm glad with these restorations, the original film look has been restored because it looks more atmospheric and kind of dirty, whereas everyone kind of looked a bit too soft and as if they were a bit tanned in the original absolutely oh, well not the original the 2011, 2011 right? yeah and the, and the color timing for that was screwed up as well because everything was so like purple and there were just weird like color alterations to it and uh thankfully that's all been fixed um it's if you actually look at, at these particular restorations that they, they did it from the 1997 special edition and any changes ah, okay. any changes since then they had to remake from the ground up for this um, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Have you ever checked out the despecialized editions? Uh, I've checked out the first despecialized edition, yeah, for this one, and it's it's mm -hmm. it's magnificent. It's it's absolutely yeah. fantastic. Um, it was a ball ache to get my hands on, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, and I've still not seen the seat the uh, the other two. I've only seen this one um, despecialized. Yeah, but it was, it was um... amazing. Well. I did have the original trilogy on DVD originally in the um, mid noughties because mm. uh, it came with the 2004 special edition, but also the each of the three original films was on a bonus disc. Yeah, yeah. The problem was though they hadn't been restored, so the picture quality looked very crusty and very old. So yeah, yeah. It's why I always just went for the special edition, but same, yeah. yeah. And I, I have that set I think, too. Um, I have that set too, and, yeah. and all, all the the bonus discs are just taken from the laser discs, and they've done nothing mm -hmm. to them. They've literally just slapped the laser disc transfer on a DVD, um, so it just yeah. looks terrible. Because I'd say, because I'd argue this film probably has the worst changes to it. It does, yeah, yeah absolutely. Because of all um, the because of all the CG, I particularly added for Moss Eisley, it just doesn't fit. I'd say this has this absolutely has the most of most changes, and they're frequent as well. Um, I think Return of yeah. the Jedi probably has my least favorite, but this has this has the most of them, and it's uh, yeah. Yeah, it's my least favorite change overall has to be the no from Same. Darth Vader in Return of the Jedi. Oh, it just ruins the moment. That's my least favorite as well. Yeah. And controversially, I'd say my favourite change, aside from updating the sound and picture, is probably Ian McDermott in Empire Strikes Back, just to um, establish continuity. Yeah, I do like that. Um, I wish they hadn't changed the dialogue, because some of the dialogue in that yeah. has been changed really weirdly, but I, I do like like the basic idea of having him in there. Um, I do mm -hmm. like some of the changes. Like There are some that I would choose to keep, um, like just off the top of my head that the, the the rings around the explosions just because they look cool yeah they, they just look cool they and, do um, so i yeah i like those um it's the little ones i like i think not 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 the overt overhauls now when you hear um david prowse speak <laughs> as darth vader he sounds like um oh what's he called dark helmet yeah. from <laughs> Um, space balls. I thought, oh my god, it's him. <laughs> you are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Take her away. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel sorry for him because George Lucas said to him, oh, don't worry about your dialogue sounding quite muffled because we'll read W at mm. a later date. So when he saw the <laughs> film, he thought, wait, I'm not speaking. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Yeah, he he passed away recently, didn't he? It was very very sad. He um, but he he. I he's... actually did see him at a comic con in two thousand and seventeen, but um, I think I'd run out of money for the day, so I couldn't ask for his autograph, which oh, was a shame. Yeah, I never met him. I I saw him around a few times because he he did a lot of comic cons, so I did see him, but yeah. I never I never actually met him. But um, he the the physicality. I I actually think his performance is quite underrated because most people think of yeah. James Earl Jones, but like the physicality that. 
um, that Dave Price brings to it is fantastic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, because um, and funnily enough, when they were filming with Anthony Daniels as C-3PO, they intended to have a voice actor dub over his lines, but mm. I think he liked the vocal performance so much he just decided to keep him, and I'm glad he did. Yeah, I can't imagine C-3PO without Anthony Daniels. Like, it's just, mm-hmm. the voice fits perfectly. Um, and, yeah, I just... This is, full disclosure, this is my favourite Star Wars film. I know everyone goes for Empire, and I it used to be Empire for me, but when I watched the despecialised edition of this, I, it became my favourite, because I just, everything about mm. it, just, just this, the passion behind everything in this... Um, even in the yeah, even because, in this um, even in this version, the special edition, like the passion for everything shines through, and it's a really like underdog story of getting this made, and I just think that's why it's my favourite. Yeah, because um, I don't think anyone really believed in it that much. No, yeah. Um, I mean, Alec Guinness actually put it best because I think in an interview he said, "I think it's a good film, but uh, I do think there are going to be people out there who take it way too seriously." Hmm. Yeah. Oh boy, how little did he know? <laughs> little did he know, yeah. <laughs> but the, I've yeah. I've heard conflicting reports about him. Like some people say, oh yeah, he was one of the only people who who believed in the production, and then some people say, oh he hated the production. So I don't I don't yeah. know. There are conflicting stories about that. Yeah, I think he liked doing it, but mm. I think maybe the problem was he was more known, well known for that rather than doing other things. Yeah, typecast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that was the problem, and that was sort of in the because he, um, years, yeah, because um, he was in a film called Cromwell. He played King Charles the First, and if you go into the YouTube comment section where he's about to be executed, it's just a load of Star Wars quotes. <laughs> and uh, uh, I think, oh god, at least he's not alive to see this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I. It... I mean, we probably won't, like, speak about the changes too much other than when they show up, um, but mm. it's hard to, like, once you actually look at everything that was changed, literally, every, like, nearly every shot has has had some sort of alteration to it. Like, even just in the, in those shots of 3PO there, the sky's different. Like, it's just mm. minor things, like, and every inch of it has been changed in some way. Um, which mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think anyone would have a problem with it if the original versions were available. Um, yeah, because yeah. it's so weird. You can get three different versions of Superman the movie. Yeah. You can get the theatrical, the extended cut, the three-hour TV version, yeah, but exactly. you can't get the... But with these, you can't get the originals. And it's just so weird. Yeah. You can get five cuts of Blade Runner on Blu-ray, <laughs> but not... not oh, yeah. But not, like... it's just, it, it is mental. And I really just... Just for the sake of preserving film history, I just kind of wish that that they be released, but I don't think that'll ever happen, unfortunately. Yeah, it is a shame. And funnily enough, this was supposed to come out Christmas 1976, but it was pushed back uh, to May, and obviously it started the tradition of every Star Wars film being released in May, uh, up until the sequels started. Yeah, yeah. The sequel trilogy. Absolutely. And wasn't... Wasn't the force one of one of the sequels was going to be released in May, wasn't it? And it was I think it was the Last Jedi was going to be. No, released. I think it was going to be Episode Nine. Oh, was it? It was one. Yeah. Yeah, it was, them, it was yeah. going to be May twenty nineteen. It would come out, and then it was pushed back to December twenty nineteen. And I think that was probably due to Colin Trevorrow leaving and oh, JJ yeah. Abrams having to take over. Oh yeah, that was it. I remember now because I remember actually being a little bit glad that it was delayed because it became like a Christmas tradition. Every every two yeah. years to to for it, to have a new. I mean, film. what was I gonna see? What was I gonna see? Christmas twenty nineteen. Cats. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> Cats or or Star Wars. Yeah, I even joked to my friends when we were about to see episode nine. I said, "Well, guys, if we can't get in, we'll have to go see Cats." <laughs> yeah. Oh god, that ah, uh, how did the Cats being released against Star Wars? What what a catastrophe! That uh, a catastrophe that wasn't even intended. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a mess that was. Mhm. Now I remember um, this whole scene here of uh, Arto and Freepio getting captured by the Jawas. That was in excruciatingly in every detail on the Lego cut scene. <laughs> oh yeah, 
Yeah, oh yeah, they're like. And it's and that game it made it made quite a weird change because right in the film R two uh, runs away because he says, "Oh, I've got to deliver my message." But in the Lego game, the jar was come back to the farm and kidnap <laughs> them. Yeah. What? Yeah. But... What's wrong with R two just running away? <laughs> you couldn't animate that. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, that these levels on the Lego game were my least favourites as a kid because they they were so long. I remember. Um, yeah, it, yeah. Because um, the whole scene of Luke um, finding R two again it takes up what two minutes of the film, and the yeah. level is like twenty minutes. The You've got to so fight long. sand people. Yeah, yeah. The level oh, is so, so annoying. Long. It's it's definitely and when I replayed it last year, it was definitely my least favourite level. Of the, of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And I think actually as a kid, because this, this whole bit is quite slow, um, mm-hmm. I think as a kid I kind of neglected this one. And I usually would go for, what, for one of the other films because the other films are kind of straight into the action. Um, but as I've grown older, I've learned yeah, to kind a... of appreciate this one a lot more. As a kid, I think Return of the Jedi was my favorite because um as Same. i liked the prequels back then it had that the most connection to it so, so that's why i liked it a lot but mm. yeah empire is still my favorite but with this film a new hope i'd probably say it's my comfort star wars you know you oh, could i could put so, it on yeah. any time of the day and still enjoy it <laughs> yeah for sure it's very optimistic and up- uplifting really i guess uh and I think, yeah, mm-hmm. like like I said earlier, Empire for a long time was my favourite, um, and it's only still is for me. Yeah, 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 it's it's still very much up there for me. I, uh, I think, yeah, I just recently gained a sort of appreciation for how you sort of guerrilla filmmaking this was. Like everything was going mm-hmm. wrong. Every single thing that could go wrong did go wrong. Um, yeah, yeah. And George Lucas, he didn't give much direction to the actors. It was literally yeah. more faster, more intense. Faster and more intense, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's um It wasn't like Luke Skywalker gonna be called Luke Starkiller and have spoons for hands or something, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Star Luke Starkiller <laughs> and Han Solo was gonna be a like a big green a a green skinned guild creature, like a f- giant fish. Ah. Um <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And uh Apparently, ILM <laughs> ILM workers were like massive hippies, and like they'd come in to work every day and just get stoned, and like and like George Luke, <laughs> George Lucas George Lucas would just find them like in a room just smoking weed and getting high, and they were just so chilled out, oh, and uh, yeah, it caused quite a lot of conflicts because they were behind anyway, and every time somebody came mm-hmm. to sort of rush them along, they were just off their tits, <laughs> which was like. Uh... <laughs> peak 70s filmmaking (laughs) I think I questioned this in Attack of the Clones but they're on a desert planet in a hot climate Mm. (laughs) what exactly do they farm yeah (laughs) because there's nothing there there's nothing there yeah you can't grow crops or vegetation so what do they farm (laughs) yeah (laughs) Um, unless it's water (laughs) well yeah they talk about moisture evaporators don't they and um yeah. Yeah, I just realised as well, um, Luke has a lot in common with Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz and Clark Kent in Superman. You know, they both live uh they both live with their aunt and uncle. Well, mm. Clark obviously lives with her parents who aren't his biological ones, and they all live on farms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um Yeah, that, and... In fact I wonder, was um was Over the Rainbow inspired did that inspire Lucas to write the scene where Luke looks at the sunsets? I think so. I, it could have done because I. The thing with Star Wars is it's a mi- it's a mismatch. It, oh God, I can't speak. It's a mishmash of of all sorts of influences from Akira Kurosawa films mm-hmm. and old westerns um, to fairy tale mm-hmm. stories, and Lucas just took things took things from various stories yeah, and definitely. applied it to Star Wars and uh, it would not surprise mm-hmm. me if Over the Rainbow was a, was, a, was an inspiration <laughs> for that actually because yeah and 
and you know this um this was saved in the edit infamously as well um cause... it was yeah because yeah. um just imagine cut. all this without John Williams's music or the special effects. Oh, God, it could yeah. have been, it could have been easily forgotten and not had an impact on film at all. No, exactly. It could have been known as the biggest disaster ever, but it was saved in editing. Absolutely. Apparently, the the first cut was a disaster, and it was just it it was so slow and and uh, and the editing was just well, yeah because so there's um. Yeah, because there's deleted scenes of Luke hanging out with his friends or something. He looks up at the sky and thinks, "Hey, look! It looks like a space battle or something like that." Yeah, yeah. And I think that's, and I think we see Biggs there for the first time because we first see him here, at least in the Rebel Alliance. Yeah, there's like a motley crew of of Luke's friends, kind <laughs> of. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's um, it's interesting how you, if if one element had been missing from this. It all could have collapsed in on mm-hmm. itself, um, and yeah. George Lucas's wife at the time wasn't it? it, it um, Marsha mm-hmm. Lucas was a huge part of the editing of it, and um, yeah. Now, Mark Hamill, I've not met him, but he just seems like the nicest guy in the world. Oh, he's a legend. He's such a legend. Um, and even to, even now, he's even, like, yeah, his Twitter's amazing. I think he's even said, um, he's even said, if you think Luke is gay, um, make him gay. I'm all for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, he's very open to fans. He's very sort of like... Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's, he seems very happy to sort of not give the film over to the fans but to sort of allow each fan to yeah. to have their own experience with Star Wars and he's never like mm-hmm. like like William Shatner for example is a massive dick in real life um like he's, ne- uh. he's ne- <laughs> like he's never oh you can't do like there are theories that Captain Kirk is like bi or, or pan I think and you know William, mm-hmm. William Shatner is dead against that He's like, no, this can't be, this can't be. Like, he's really territorial. But Mark Hamill, yeah, he's 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 such a cool guy. Um, and of course, the voice mm-hmm. of the Joker. Um, that's his other sort of big role. <laughs> I mean, he also voiced the bodyguard instructor on The Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when Homer becomes a bodyguard for the mayor. <laughs> Shut your ass, old boy. <laughs> Yeah, oh, in fact, my... that was the first thing I ever saw him in when he appears as himself and that bodyguard instructor on that Simpsons episode. Oh. I'm here today as Luke Skywalker, but I'm also here to talk about Sprint. <laughs> <laughs> Homer, use the forks. The forks? The forks. Use the forks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, I thought your ankle yeah. was broken. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. the thing about that is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's great in that he's brilliant. plus he's on the commentary for that episode and yeah oh he's a, yeah he's a blast in that episode <laughs> luke be a jedi tonight <laughs> someone's in interp- when he's speaking to that i don't know theater director and says nathan detroit won't wear this and the song isn't even in the show some have <laughs> requoted that speaking to ryan johnson about the last jedi this is a conceptual nightmare. Luke Skywalker wouldn't kill his nephew, oh, and this, and this isn't even in the Force. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, we can get to that. Oh yeah, we'll get, we'll get there, we'll get there. But <laughs> yeah, there are um. There are certain theories that um, K9 ripped off R2-D2 or R2-D2 ripped off K9 and vice versa and things like that. But I think, um, yeah, I think K9 actually was devised before R2. It would have been, yeah, because the dates are so close. Yeah. It probably... Mm-hmm. But then again, Lucas had this script kicking around for years, didn't he? Um, but yeah. yeah, it would have been way before... Yeah, mm-hmm. it's 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 because because this the origins of Star Wars date back so far, like uh, it's there's do, so yeah. like concept art like early concept art, um before. Did he ever try this. selling this script to Disney? I I think he pretty much tried to selling it to everywhere that was, the the, the mm-hmm. every movie studio around, 
Um, it was literally just a luck of the draw. I think that Fox was like, "Yeah, we'll 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 give it a go." <laughs> but um, well, I think yeah. um, they showed a rough cut to the. I think it was the president of Fox. I think like in February 1977. I think he's known for saying this is the greatest movie i've ever seen yeah alan ladd jr i think it was i think that, and that's he, it yeah he, i think i don't know if it's him it might be another guy but one of them is like uh infamous for saying that he cried at the test screening of it and that, that and this was before any of the special effects were added or anything it was literally just oh, wow. um he like cried at the test screening and this was a version of the film without all of the special effects where that the the battles were like represented by archive footage of world war Two. Dog fights and things like that, and I see. Bruce's jacket looks actually pretty seventies there. It's, it's, it's basically a seventies denim yeah. jacket, isn't it? <laughs> That's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whereas um, Luke and Owen, they're dressed in um, they're just in like robes. Yeah, it's like Star which Wars. Which futuristic quite. and historical. Yeah. yeah. I will say for for in the prequels defense they they did pick pretty good actors to represent Owen and Baru. Um they do look a yeah. lot like the like their counterparts. Mhm. Yeah, cuz I bet they're aware that Darth Vader is his father, so yeah. Yeah, well actually in the um in the first special edition, they they removed this change now, but they added like a digital pause between her words there to like show hesitation. So it was like in, the, in, in, the, ve- yeah. in the very first special edition, it was like he has too much of his father in him, like to. to oh, okay. But they've removed that change since. But it's interesting that they, yeah, because with force, because so much of this original trilogy is like with with the hindsight of what happened since. And this film in particular, mm. with the hindsight of where the sequels went, with like Leia being his sister and and all that, it's interesting looking back at this and sort of blocking them out of your mind, kind of, because um, it's clear it is, yeah. it's clear that that was not the intention. <laughs> Yeah, sci- cinema and sci-fi, they weren't exactly uh, big at the time, were they? Because no, no, the yeah. only one I can think of is 2001 A Space Odyssey, and that was like nine years before this. That was the biggest one, yeah. And even so, um, and even so it wasn't pretty mainstream, I'd say, you know. It's, it's pretty much an art house film, 2001, <laughs> whereas this is more... Oh yeah. I mean that that film basically has you thinking about evolution, the <laughs> meaning of life, and God, yeah. you know all the good stuff you want to see at a film. But um, yeah, this is more action adventure. Try, and, um, yeah. That's definitely what Lucas intended to have. I mean, try showing two thousand and one to a nine year old. They'll be. Oh, although, God. although having said that, I know some ki- I I have heard stories where some adults showed their kids two thousand and one, and they were like thrilled by the first twenty minutes of it with the apes and everything. Um. So oh, and then okay. so, and then sort of they lost interest later on in the film. But yeah. Um. Yeah. Two thousand and one was probably the biggest one before this, and mm-hmm. before then it was like B movies, like fifty those classic B movies from the fifties, like um. Yeah. Yeah, like stuff. Like uh, actually, I'd say no, the biggest sci-fi film before two thousand one, a space odyssey. He was Santa Claus conquers the Martians. <laughs> Santa Claus conquers the Martians. <laughs> Excellent. I have seen that. It's. Oh god, <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Oh god, <laughs> but it's it's like oh, uh, it's like they take it so seriously, but you you just can't help but laugh at it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is that that's not the same I'll... thing as Santa Claus versus the Devil, is it? No, is that different? Because there's a no... no, I think it's different. No, it must be different, yeah. Because I know that one has like fifty different titles, and I get really confused about which one's which. Yep. God. And there's there's stories of like this um, Tunisia shoot where it's like people were like oh, passing yeah. out because of the, the the heat and everything and Anthony yeah, Daniels, Anthony in Daniels and costume. Kenny Baker they must have been boiling oh yeah God like <laughs> they're in a metal cage essentially mm-hmm. and like and like 
I can't. Was this? I can't remember whether it was this or Raiders of the Lost Ark, but like on one of them, that the, the entire crew got food poisoning um, from the, like the hotel they were staying in or something, and it just made the whole yeah. the whole shoot a nightmare. I think that might have been Raiders of the Lost think... Ark actually, but. Yeah, it was too hot in A New Hope, but then for Empire Strikes Back, they had the opposite problem. It was too cold. <laughs> That's it, because one of the shots in Empire was literally filmed by like Mark Campbell walking out of his hotel room, wasn't it? And they were just like, That's quick, it, yeah. film that! <laughs> and uh, there we go. <laughs> oh god, the CGI rock in front of R2-D2 here. Like, how did he fit it in makes there? makes no sense. <laughs> makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted to uh, improve the film. And one thing that I think was uh, sorely lacking in the original <laughs> was uh, another rock. We'll add a rock in front of him. Most of the, most and of the... then there's Obi-Wan's... Oh, yeah. What was that? Whoa! It was like... <laughs> was like, oh, God. <laughs> I mean, even Family Guy, when they did this, got that right, because they just have Herbert going... <laughs> something like yeah, that. that yeah, that was, the, that was the first special edition, and then they changed it again to this. Because originally, like, originally it was just like a like a growl, and then the whistle, uh, and then this nonsense. <laughs> it's a shame that Obi Wan's first words, uh, chronologically, "Hello there," they've Hello been, there. yeah, they've been usurped by McGregor. Oh yeah, in Revenge of the <laughs> Sith. Yeah, I definitely love to. I am looking forward to the Kenobi TV series whenever that comes out. Same, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be against um, Kenobi meeting Vader again. No, I mean they. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't be because because um, yeah. late because later in the film Vader says, uh, "When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master." Right. Does that sound like he's talking to the guy who cut off his <laughs> arms and legs and left him to horrifically burn to death? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be against the meeting again, because, um... Oh, but then again... Mm... The... Mm... Isn't Vader quite hesitant later in the film when he's not sure if Obi-Wan is here? He, well, he does... I know yeah. Grand Moff Tarkin does say, um... Oh, surely he died years ago or something like that. Well, he, yeah, and there's that whole of presence I've not felt since. And then, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. You'd have to be careful with that, I think. You'd have to be a little bit mm. careful. I mean, but, you know, he's met Darth Maul in Alec this in, yeah, in Rebels. Yeah, Rebels, and, so... Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's not, like, that. that's not too long before that i can't remember that's not that's not years before this it's, it's... rebels is set five years before five this, isn't years it? yeah because yeah it's also quite funny how um uh, during the making of episode three george lucas said um the great thing about episode three it brings all the dots together it <laughs> closes off the star wars saga and the most spin-off material we've had is in between episodes three and yeah. four <laughs> And I'm so yeah. I'm I bet so, he's pissed off at that. I, I am kind of sick of that period. I must admit, because it's like every yeah, single. Yeah, I am a bit. We've had two spin-off films set between three and four. We've had mm. like most of the games now are set in between three and four, like Jedi Fallen Order. We had a whole four-season TV show set between three and four. <laughs> it's like yeah. this, it, that 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 period has been well and truly milked. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to see more in between six and seven. Yeah, I would as well. Because we've got the Mandalorian now, which is which is fills that gap a bit. But mm. even then, that sort of keeps to the outskirts a little bit. It doesn't. It doesn't. Maybe have um, Luke's Jedi training. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'd like to see a lot of that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you fought in the Clone Wars. Who'd have thought that would? <laughs> yeah. Spark off an entire TV Spark series. Spark off seven seasons of a TV show and uh, and a, and, yeah. a, and a mini series from two thousand three as well. The 2D yeah, one. Dot 2 fans, when Time Lord Victorious comes out, <laughs> how can you make a spin-off series based on one line of dialogue, yeah. Star Wars fans? First time, <laughs> eh? Ah, <laughs> uh, the... Your father's lightsaber. He killed men, women, and children with it. He killed it. many people with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is like... Uh, I know in hindsight, it's now not good, but yeah, it's like giving someone Hitler's gun or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah hindsight, well... Ooh. That's why I said in the last one, you know, Anakin should have been using a red saber when yeah, he became he Darth should. Vader. Yeah, 
and it's not, and that's actually been made worse since the sequels because this blade now gets passed down to Ray. So that's three generations oh, of it. <laughs> three generations using a weapon that was that you was used to kill children. <laughs> mm. I always find it cool how they have to use the jump cut whenever the lightsaber mm. turns on in this. <laughs> yeah, but they fixed that for the rest of the film. They did, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm honestly surprised they've never actually... That's not been one of the changes in the special edition. I'm sure there's some mm. way to like fix that these days, but mm. I'm glad they haven't because it's, it, it, it's, it's just part of the charm. And of course, Obi Wan is a bit of a liar here. Yes, yeah. yeah. Which I've said before, if the original trilogy came out today, they they'd be as controversial as the sequels, I think, because of the way the films yeah, go. I, and like, because like in Empire, when he comes back as a ghost and said, "You must go to the Dagobah system and learn from Yoda," you have people saying, "When did they ever say in the original that you could come back as a ghost?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and Ugh. given that this ends on a big optimistic, yeah, we beat the bad guys, and then, uh, episode five literally begins with they're in hiding, they're in the they're in, you know they're on the run. Um, and that's a common criticism with the Last Jedi, where it's like, oh, I but I thought they beat the 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 first order with Starkiller Base, and well, and it's like, well, yeah, it's the sort of the same thing with this and Empire, uh, you know, it's yeah, the they're same still deal. powerful. Yeah, it's the same deal. It's it's Empire has very very has a lot of similarities to the Last Jedi, and I often mm-hmm. wonder like if that came out now and uh, compared to this, I mean, like the whole retconning of, of some of the elements of this which is why i'm always so struck by how simple this is whenever i watch it it I'm is very simple like... it's such a i think that's yeah. why it's loved so much just for its simplicity whereas mm. uh, empire it expands upon what we've learned in the original film which is what a good sequel should do so yeah it's just in its simplicity that i think everyone fell in love with it absolutely and i mean it's a fairy tale it's literally a fairy tale it's far. It's you've you know, got the the young hero, the princess, yeah. the old wizard, the evil, mm. the evil wizard <laughs> who is Darth Vader, who lives in a castle, the Death Star. Yes, yeah. It's very much like it's if you boil it down, it's it's young farm boy goes on an adventure with wizards and and pirates and and beats mm-hmm. the bad guy and saves the princess. That's it's it's a fairy tale, and I love that about this that it is so simple. Yeah, and R2 and 3PO are kind of like the court jesters or the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the fools or the something fools, like yeah. that. Absolutely, yeah. I also, I always forget that this film doesn't have the Imperial March because the theme for the Empire in this one is... Ba, 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 ba. Like, that's the theme in this one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and this guy, this guy is uh, Gavrock from Doctor Who in Delta and the Bannermen. Uh... <laughs> Oh, which which one? The one speaking now? Yeah, the guy with the the sn- the weird haircut. The not the younger guy, the older sort of. Oh, that's Gavrock. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, that's Ga- that's yeah. um. Oh, what's his name? I've forgotten his name. Oh, mate. I can't remember the actor's name. Yeah. But isn't um. Don't isn't is... Garrett Hagen, who's in um the mutants? Isn't he Biggs? He's Biggs. Yep, yeah, he's Biggs. Yeah. Mhm. And also, we've got. Peter Cushing, who was Doctor Who. <laughs> yes, yeah. There's a lot now, of obviously, famously, he um, he found his boots really uncomfortable, so when his feet weren't in shot, he wore his slippers. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, and apparently, he used to he used to bicycle to and from his wife's grave every day as well because she had just passed away, oh. and he was just like a, he was just oh. a very he he was like grieving at the time, but he was still like apparently just a, the sweetest guy in the world. Like the the, the, yeah. the nicest possible guy, and considering how much of a bastard he plays in this, <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. yeah. Funnily enough, Tarkin feels like the main villain here because yeah. Vader just seems like his assistant. Basically, yeah. Like um, yeah, because when he says Vader release him, he actually listens to him, and mm. yeah, he doesn't speak un- unless Tarkin's already got the situation in hand. So exactly, yeah. Yeah, and I think um, quite a lot of marketing did have peter cushing as marketed as the main villain 
basic. Well, yeah, he is, and then and that's if you uh, people have said before, if you actually watch this first film, there's not much to Darth Vader beyond him looking cool. Like there's not his character's not that interesting if you just take this film on the face value. Um, yeah, because he has yeah. a previous past with Obi Wan, and that's all we know. That's of him. it. Yeah, that's the only bit of like mystery or, or intrigue around his character. The rest of it is very. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there's not there's not much to him. He's just a cool bad guy. It's it's the sequel that yeah. expanded on that really, and uh, uh, and if you actually watch some of yeah, these... I'd argue um, Kylo Ren in the Force Awakens. If you just go by Force Awakens, he has a more oh yeah, he has a he has more of a backstory than Vader, I'd say for sure. He's he's the most he's the out of just the taking their just the first films into account. He's the more interesting, I think, mm. as a villain. Um, not not necessarily it's not saying he's better but just yeah he's uh yeah <laughs> only imperial stormtroopers have precise aim oh yeah <laughs> no, please <laughs> <laughs> if you if you actually watch some of these scenes apparently like in the first cut the tattooing stuff was all in one block and then the empire stuff was all in one block and it was it didn't intercut like it yeah. is doing like that scene just now with the, with the um the empire talking and i find your lack of faith disturbing apparently that was actually that's supposed to be taking place much later but it got moved to the front really? half of the film to like and it works a lot better it works a hell of a lot better mm-hmm This is dark. I remember as a kid being like, "This is yeah." This I'm is surprised really dark. this is still a U. <laughs> yeah, me too. These films should not be a U. I'm surprised that even now they're still yeah. a U. Um, because you've got like arms and limbs being cut off. You've got you know charred corpses yeah. in this one. It is. W- they've been very lenient on these films. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd be. Um... Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if in a few years' time they re-release them and oh, they're automatically a twelve. Because yeah, anything is, is a yeah. twelve these days. If it's an action film, you're automatically a twelve. Well, well, these had to be reclassified again, like for the for the new mm. the 2019 versions, and they're still a U. Like as recently as 2019, yeah. they're reclassified as a U. Still, it's it's it is it is insane. Mm. It's really it's really insane. And considering the first two prequels are both a PG, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I I don't know, it's. Yeah, this this scene as a kid was always a proper Mandela effect for me because I see I remember as a kid thinking that you that as this as the Imperial soldier walks down the corridor you heard her screaming, but that isn't actually the case. I I yeah. somehow made that up in my mind as a kid, but for years I thought that that was what happened. I don't know why it's just weird. And I've just noticed three PO is carrying the Jawa <laughs> corpses and putting them on the fire. Yeah, he is. Well, oh, wow. I mean, is he? Yeah, because it's so weird. In um, in in the later scene, in Mos Eisley, he says, "Oh, I hate those Jawas, filthy creatures." <laughs> I'm going to burn their bodies. <laughs> yeah, because it's almost like he's doing it out of respect. But yeah. with that line, maybe in hindsight, he was doing it out of hatred. <laughs> Oh, this was a level as well in Lego Star Wars. Yeah, and you could actually... It was so annoying. (laughs) Well, Uh, what was cool about that level, though, is you could actually sell your speeder. Like, they talk about him selling his speeder in this, but you could actually do that in the level. It was like a secret bit. You could park it somewhere, uh, and a Jawa would come along and buy it Mm -hmm. off you, and you'd get quite a lot of studs for it. Oh, nice. I remember this place also has a cinema and a hot tub. It does, yeah. <laughs> in the Lego <laughs> game. Oh, yeah, this God. stuff here. Compared, oh, it just doesn't yeah. Ma- it just sticks out. It just doesn't match at all. And especially on this new version as well, comp- like the quality difference between the original footage and this yeah, stuff Yeah, why would is, you is... put a... Oh, yeah. Why don't you put a camel walking by in a <laughs> droid unit? Oh yes, I know what I can improve the film with. I'll cover the entire frame with a giant CGI lump of shit. There, that's mm. improved the film. <laughs> yeah, 
It just sticks out really badly. You know what really grinds my gears? When I can't find the droids I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, me too. What gives with that? <laughs> To be fair, they as bad as the CGI is, they've done quite a good job at removing like the Vaseline on the lens there and stuff. Because if you watch the original, the entire frame yeah. is like soaked with Vaseline to cover up the wheels on the, on the land speeder. So they have done like a pretty mm -hmm. good job at removing that. Now this music we're about to hear mm. um, in the cantina is called Jizz. <laughs> Yes, it Apparently. is. Apparently. <laughs> yes, it is. A takeoff on jazz. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can remember... The thing I remember most about this music is... Um, when, playing the original Battlefront 2, when you uh, did um, Heroes vs. Villains, uh, the only map you could do it on, because I had the PSP version, was uh, Moss Eisley. And they just play this music on a loop. Yes. And I'm like, <laughs> the greatest he the greatest Jedi and Sith are doing battle, and you played this music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I find it. I I instantly think of Lego Star Wars when I hear this because of the. Uh, oh yeah, because of the cantina. The hub world, yeah. That's like the base. Yeah. yeah. Now every <laughs> one of these aliens has their own wiki page yeah, on uh, uh, yeah. Wikipedia. <laughs> Some of the replaced ones as well for the special edition are actually the same mask flipped around and worn backwards. So like we saw earlier, there's there's uh, a guy with tusks and uh, mm -hmm. a, another creature that we see in a minute that, that replaced one from the original version is the same mask, just like flipped around. <laughs> it's like... Mm -hmm. I remember before Solo came out, I joked... Oh, I wonder how it's going to end. Is, are we going to have a CGI young Han Solo meeting two people in a bar and he says, I'm Han Solo, kept the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> and it reveals that he's met Luke and Obi-Wan, yeah, you know, yeah. starting the exact second <laughs> he's in A New Hope, like Rogue One, wink, wink. <laughs> I'm quite glad Solo didn't do that, to be fair. It's, it, uh, yeah, yeah it, it went... I mean, in terms of like being a prequel, Solo, it did, it fell into the trappings of like here's Han got his net, how he got his gun, and mm. that that really bad bit where he goes, "Oh, you're on your own, are you? You're Han Solo." Oh, Solo. Oh, that's terrible. But um, but I know. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't bother to like link it straight up. I'm glad it ended at a certain point. But mm. um, but yeah, God, yeah. And these two appear in Rogue One. I just remembered. Yeah, and he oh. the, he's played by Michael Smiley in Rogue One as well. He it's is like... in that, yeah. <laughs> and he, and he and he. I mean, to be fair, this inter this interaction they have of them here, it's literally uh, it predicted how you meet people online. Oh yeah. He doesn't like you. <laughs> oh. I don't like you. You don't even know who I am. Uh, uh, that literally happened to me last summer. I had a guy saying, um, this guy who blocked you, he doesn't like you. Uh, oh. <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> oh, God, it's insane. I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is the robot chicken sketch where um, they're actually good people, but guy with the deformed face pretends to be bad so the guy uh, the first guy growls at luke but he's actually saying i like your shirt where's it from <laughs> and he and the other guy says he doesn't like you we're wanted men <laughs> and then he growls i didn't say that <laughs> now ha harrison ford he was paid Forty thousand dollars for this, I think. Yeah, he was he was paid a hell of a lot, and um, yeah, <laughs> it's. But he was paid. Um, yeah, I think he was paid a hell of a lot more for the Force Awakens. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I can remember someone actually asked him at a convention. Uh, they said. Um, You've appeared in new films of Star Wars, Blade Runner, and Indiana Jones. Is it your mission to be in every single uh, 
reboot of the fra- all the franchises you've been in, and he said, "You'll bet your ass it is." <laughs> oh yeah, because he, he had the yeah, yeah, and he had Blade Runner as well, and it was like, it, is he going mm. on a mission to um to to <laughs> kill off all of his old characters? Yeah. <laughs> Cause he, and he's doing Indiana Jones I mean, he's 5 quite as well. A, yeah, I mean, he's quite rare because um, like he's probably the only actor who I know who's played like two really iconic characters that originated in cinema. Yeah, he's... Because um, yeah. obviously he's been Han Solo and now, he, and he's also Indiana Jones. Yeah, and he, he's... Each character, like, they're, they're similar characters, but at the same time, when I'm watching... Harrison Ford is Indiana Jones. Han Solo doesn't enter my mind at all because because he's just, oh yeah like they're too. completely they're they're similar characters but somehow they're completely different. It's weird, like it it just they don't mm-hmm. seem like the same human being to me at all. Which is yeah. Uh now we've got the infamous who shot first. Guta Guta Solo <laughs> the in oh god. Well. Was this in? Hmm, actually, I'm not sure. Was this included in the in the original cut because they couldn't do the Jabber effect? But then again, hmm, I wonder. It, it was, yeah, because the Jabber, the information in the Jabber but, scene got moved to this scene because they repeat the same lines. Yeah, they have the the, the whole um. Uh, look, mm-hmm. even I get bored sometimes. You think I had a choice? Um, that line yeah. is literally lifted from this scene and placed into the Jabba scene and it's the same take and the same audio so it's the same line repeated it is, which is yeah. why the Jabba scene doesn't need to be mm. in this because they removed all the information to here um, mm. oh and in a minute we're going to get McClunky, the Disney Plus change that happened, Yeah, here, that. here we go yeah I thought, wait, what? why did he do that? McClunky. <laughs> yeah <laughs> What a bizarre! Well, in the <laughs> in the nineteen ninety seven version, he like shoots at him three times, and then Han shoots back. He does, yeah. And there's that really awful effect of like Han's shoulder digitally shifting to the left. <laughs> uh... Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> Han Solo on who shot first? I don't know, and I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I just I. Uh... What like one one last kiss from George Lucas before the Disney deal was him making the change, the McClunky change. Mm. That was one last present because that change was actually done before the Disney deal, and it's it's only now that it was released. But it's what a what a uh... how nuts. <laughs> right, this bothers me. This door is locked. Move on to the next one. Well. Why don't we unlock it? Yeah, <laughs> legit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what if they're hiding behind there? <laughs> yeah, because what is it a door to? Are. It looks like it just looks like a, it's a door to a cor- to a cupboard. <laughs> it's not like it's mm-hmm. yeah. I, I am curious as to what he's saying there. You <laughs> watch your language. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the Jabba scene coming up here, yeah, it should have been left on the cutting room it, floor yeah. because the CGI just doesn't match at all. No, it, it's, it doesn't. It's clearly not 1977. But, it's um, a clunky scene. Have you seen the original? I have, yeah. Have you seen the original scene, yeah, with Declan Mulholland? I have, and yeah, yeah. Honestly, if they kept Jabba the Hutt as a guy, an Irish guy in a big shaggy brown coat, yeah. I thought, mm, that could have worked. Thing is... Because, um... Uh, yeah, the guy who stood in for it, he, he actually still goes for it. Yeah, he does. He, yeah. But the but the thing, the, the yeah, it's that original scene is impressive for the performance. And everything. It's a cool <laughs> scene and it's a cool Han Solo moment. But it's just like you didn't need to put this back in. You didn't need to do CGI. Yeah. Jab. All the information was moved to the Greedo scene. Not only that, you can see Greedo walking in the background. You can see him there, Unless and he's that's... still alive. Yeah. Um, Unless it's a member of his species or something. A member of his species that's oh, wearing no. the exact same clothes, though? Like, wearing the exact oh, same yeah. vest and everything. It just doesn't make sense. And, like, the awkward effect of... You've got that effect of him. Oh, it's oh, awful. Standing on his tail. It's stupid. And the CGI Boba Fett in a minute that looks at the camera is only there just because... Yeah, like... Hey, look, it's Boba Fett. 
It, it just, it, it, yeah. Well, apparently that were changes to Return of the Jedi as well. During Jabba's palace, he added more shots of Boba Fett yeah. that he didn't use originally. Yeah, he does. Yeah. But yeah. And and as well, like... I've looked it up on Wikipedia. Apparently, it is unknown who did the voice here for Jabba. Oh God. <laughs> Did he? Did he? Con- did he read from the pages of the Necronomicon or something and get get, get like? A... <laughs> but like, and and it, so there's Greedo, and Han just says, "Oh, yeah. Jabba, you're a wonderful human being." He's a giant slug. He's not a fucking human being. <laughs> that line makes no sense. Well, I, I I just saw it as him being sarcastic. You know what I mean? That's just true. Like, yeah. I, I, I yeah. yeah. I get that, but at the same time, like, I just. It's just really it on a base level that scene being reincorporated just doesn't work. It just doesn't work it doesn't, at all. No. Like, really, really bad, and it just messes with the pacing as well. It means we no longer get this big reveal of the Millennium Falcon because this is a big reveal, mate. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the big reveal, but in this version of the film, we've just we've seen just it. seen it. So the big reveal now mm-hmm. makes no sense, and it's sort of like, oh, why are they playing this as a big deal? And it takes away from the awe of it as well. It does make me laugh. Those dice on the on the on the Millennium Falcon. They they mm. tried to make that such a thing in the in the Disney era films, didn't they? Because like in in oh, um, yeah. in the, in the sequels, they have the whole thing with the dice. In Solo, they really focus on the dice as well. And it's like, was mm-hmm. that ever a thing? <laughs> it's just it's a cool little decoration, but that's kind of. Uh, uh, that line there, it's surpri- <laughs> you know, with the hindsight of the prequels, I'm surprised Lucas didn't go back and have Obi Wan say yeah, that line. Yeah, same, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. this is great though. This is classic Star Wars. This is this is absolutely like mm-hmm. br- this is brilliant. Do you have the holiday special? <laughs> I made my own DVD of it, yeah. I don't know. All oh, right. Don't ask me why. I was bored. <laughs> I, I don't know why, because like, uh, I, like, I think it was just because I was bored and I was like, hey, it's completionist, but oh, God. Mm. <laughs> like, the whole thing's online, isn't it? It's uh, Yeah, it's I all think. on YouTube, yeah. It's all on YouTube. Yeah, I mean... Disney are never going to release it. Lucas has made no attempt to take it down or anything, even though he's said, said, if I had a time machine, I'd go back and smash all those copies. Yeah, I I feel like Disney (laughs) Disney now are like, they're never going to release it, ever, but at the same time, they're coasting on its popularity. Like, they did the Lego Star Wars Holiday Special, they're always referencing it. Like, they're always referencing Life Day. Um... (laughs) <laughs> like last year they did like a fact file it was like did you know boba fett first appeared in the notorious holiday special so they're really like they they do notorious for the wrong reason exactly yeah <laughs> so they do like talk about it a lot it's not like they're trying to bury it um but they mm. they, they will never ever release it yeah that's true yeah now Carrie Fisher said she couldn't act with Peter Cushing because he was so nice in real life that yeah, it was hard yeah. to be scared of him. Have you read um any of Carrie Fisher's books? No, I haven't. No, not yet. I read her last because my friend from college lent lent me her last book um before she died. It was very mm-hmm. very short time before she died, and it was um The Princess Diarist, and it's a wonderful book because it's like. It, it's a foot it's about her experiences on the set of this and her affair with harrison ford uh she goes into quite Wait, what yeah no her and harrison ford were um <laughs> were, were having an affair during this what did they sleep together they slept together yeah and um oh wow she goes and <laughs> she goes into great detail about uh about her experiences <laughs> there and um Wow. Yeah, I, I'd like to hear Harrison Ford speak about it, to be honest, because it, it's not like she bad mouths him, but it's very much like he was married at the time, and she does, she does, oh, she does sort of say, yeah, we knew it was kind of wrong, but um, it's a really good read. Blimey. It's a really good read. She, she really, she goes really introspective. She starts off the book talking about the day she dies. She's like, oh, I wonder what will be, what will happen when I die. And it was the book literally came out a few months before she did die. 
and it was like oh god, oh, god. it's a really good read i really recommend it because she she's she she's very candid she holds nothing back um but yeah and uh because they were they were auditioning this i think the same time they were auditioning carrie uh ironically enough mm. um so uh yeah and they talk about how george lucas and um well um I think the yeah. act who played uh, Tommy in Carrie, he was up for Luke Skywalker as well. He was, yeah, William Cat, yeah. That's it, yeah. yeah. William Cat. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, there's all sorts of casting stories from this. And, how, like, he did, George Lucas didn't want Han Solo because he didn't want Han Solo to become his Robert De Niro. Like, he didn't want to cast him in every yeah. film. Uh, well, he wanted to cast unknown actors, but. Um, yeah. I think the studio i think fox was saying no you need like you need at least a few established actors just so we can get people in seats yeah so that's why we got people like alec guinness and peter cushing yeah what wasn't kurt russell up for uh han solo as well there's 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 i think so yeah kurt russell was was considered and that would have been cool but uh yeah it's now another special edition change has been the color of the lightsaber in this scene oh, yeah. because I remember first watching. I thought, "Wait, why is it turned a uh, grey green, green or something yeah, like really that?" Really odd. And now it's yeah. now it's obviously gone back to blue. Which, thank God. <laughs> well, yeah, I think the problem. I think that problem was was because of the shit restoration that was done in two thousand and four that they <laughs> used for the DVDs and and the two thousand and eleven Blu rays. The the color timing was so off that that was just a byproduct of it. And it's like, is there no quality control mm-hmm. there? Because that's clearly not a deliberate change. That's something that was done because the colour timing's been messed with. Is there no like quality control? It's really odd. But, yeah. Because I like the family guy joke here. You don't believe in the force, do you? Oh, you mean that thing you discovered three hours ago <laughs> yeah. and now you're, you're its biggest <laughs> fan? <laughs> I like that from the same one as well there. Uh, man, hyperspace always looks so freaky. And it's just the Tom Baker title Bam sequence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. you got to love how Han Solo just happened to have one of these training things yeah. from the old Jedi temples. <laughs> yeah, well, in, um, in The Force Awakens, like... Because it shows up in a... Finn's looking through the yeah, thing he and he like finds it, yeah. But I do like him how Han doesn't believe in it, but by Force Awakens he says it's true. All of Yeah, it. yeah, it's a really nice it just really shows how much he's grown. Absolutely, yeah. I remember as um I think it was like in 2010 for a Christmas present. I got a um a Millennium Falcon playset and it was massive. Uh, it was like the 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 set was so huge and it and you could open the the roof and you had all these different wow. rooms. You had all these different rooms. You had the cockpit, you had this area, the training area and uh it's Was it yeah. um what they called Kenner who started the toy stuff? Kenner, yeah. The action figures for Star Wars. Yeah, cuz um yeah, they've got those. Because you don't see them in detail, but I swear they pop up in E.T. when he's showing him all yeah. those action figures. Yeah, because he goes like, oh, this is Boba Fett, this is Walrus Man. Greedo. Like, yeah. Lando Calrissian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah, God. Like, I, I, my grandparents always say, oh, yeah. You're... <laughs> my, my uncle had, like, all of these Star Wars figures as a, as a kid, like, from the late 70s. And like they sold them all at a car boot sale for like five p each, and they always they oh, always what? say to me now they always say to me now like oh they wish they held on to it because they'd probably be sitting on a fortune, <laughs> when they probably would be yeah they would have been and they, they, they sold them all five p each at a car boot sale oh <laughs> what a what a, what a what a mistake mm-hmm.
Now, to make the Millennium Falcon shake, was it literally just stagehands at either side just shaking the Basically, set? Basically, or... yeah. It was, literally... was it like on props or something? Yeah, because yeah. they, they built the cockpit set and they just had people to the side going, Ugh, like shaking them. Because they, they <laughs> rebuilt the, the set for Empire and apparently Lucas hated it. So in the in the current versions of Empire, uh... all the shots are like cropped and zoomed in because um, the set mm-hmm. was so sort of unsatisfactory originally, but... And yeah, the models, the model spaceships, they hold up so well, you know. There's no um, jerky movements. They oh, all yeah. move like... I don't want to say actual spaceships, because I've never seen one before, but... Yeah, they just move with a lot of grace and... Like actual planes or something. Because, I mean, um, the Assault on the Death Star is basically World War Two, but in space. Yeah, uh, well, again, they, they, for the... Um... For the test screenings, they used footage of dogfights from the war, from World War Two, to to mirror, to sort of envision how these shots would be, um, as like a storyboard, mm-hmm. and yeah. And that's and we've just had our first. I have a bad feeling about this. Yes, we do. Yeah, which is weird that it's yeah, that, that's Hans become says such a it's... thing. Yeah, like it's like a tradition. You've got to say it in every film, but I can't recall them saying it in Last Jedi or, or Rise of Skywalker. Oh, I pr- I think in Rise of Skywalker they m- m- they must do at some point. I'm trying to think. They must they must do at I some point. I can't remember in Last Jedi. No, I don't think they do in the Last Jedi. Mm. Yeah, I do want to know the origin of why it became such a recurring trend in the films. Yeah, I think it was literally just a case of they said it a couple of times in the original trilogy and it was like, it just became a thing. Notice with Vader's eyes here, they've got kind of a red tint to them. Yeah. But I think in Empire and Jedi, they they're removed black. Them. Well, Maybe it was easier for Dave Prowse to see. The Black Series figure that I have is, ba- is based upon this, and uh, the figure's eyes are red, um, and they're kind of mm-hmm. yeah, and it's it's <laughs> it's it's odds. Um, and his armor, his you know, his and the Stormtrooper's armor are slightly different in this. That they do yeah, look his, a bit different. His armor looks a lot dirtier in this, whereas yeah. in the later films it looks a lot cleaner and shinier, as if he got a promotion. Well, yeah, there are parts. Yeah, exactly, and there are parts in this, um, especially where you can see like the bit, the individual bits are kind of hanging off. Um, and again, it just mm-hmm. has a tatty feeling that this has, which I love. And and again, I think this film kind of went against sci-fi at the time, which, um, you know, showed the future as very clean, you know, very white. Oh, yeah. And things like that, whereas here it's very dirty and industrial. It was, it's lived in. It's a lived in universe. It's, um, it's, and, yeah. and that inspired Alien, didn't it? That, and that, and that was very much, a- Alien came. It did, yeah, because yeah. the model work and the interiors look very much like, very much like the Death Star interior, I'd say, very grey and yeah, absolutely. white and black. Um, and a- Alien very much was born from Star Wars because that the Fox were um, convinced to uh, mm. to to sort of fund Alien off the back of Star Wars because they were kind of funding any sci-fi at all. And obviously, the tone of Alien is very different. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. Well, they also wanted to be in space 
because that was the biggest film at the time before this came mm. out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Believe it or not, there were a few Jaws knockoffs. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. 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 I can remember in the Lego game, uh, this being one of my favourite levels, because you got to, um, it was cool disguising yourself as a stormtrooper and, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, being able to put a helmet on and, like, blending in with the rest of the crowd. Yeah, but it was always super frustrating, because if you got shot once, the helmet would fall off, and you'd have to go back and find another... Ah. another sort of hat dispenser yeah <laughs> and, and like sometimes you'd get like so far away from from the helmet dispensers and you get shot mm. once and you'd have to go back through the level again to try and find it mm. but i also remember like you could put helmet on chewy and it wouldn't go over his head it would just sit on mm. top of his head <laughs> yeah but it still um got you through the doors did, where yeah. only stormtroopers can go in <laughs> Now this scene, um, in the original, well, in the raw footage, you can hear, after Obi-Wan leaves, you can hear Chewie go, the old man's The old man's mad, mad. <laughs> yeah, Peter Mayhew's raw voice, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do wonder, um, did he ever intend to use Peter Mayhew's voice for Chewie? I, well, yeah, I know, um, I know that Peter Mayhew was considered for Darth Vader, um, he and he yeah. was yeah because he's he's seven foot he was seven foot three he was, something he was, like he was that massive yeah um he was so big yeah. um but he sort of went yeah no I I want to play a good guy which is yeah mm-hmm. so I've actually met Anthony Daniels um he's. Oh, he's nice. a very nice guy well he was very nice in the brief moment i got to speak to him the, the, the problem was it was um it was at a comic-con and if you bought a copy of his book you got a free signature so i i queued up oh, okay. i queued up but unfortunately uh there were a lot of people there so i was there for a long time queuing up and because it was a bit of a mad rush I said a couple of words to him and then that was it because that was really all they had time for uh. and the poor guy looked exhausted he was so shattered by him, but yeah, I bet. But, yeah. Um, but he was—he was, he was mm-hmm. nice enough from from what I spoke. The brief moment I spoke to him, um, I've heard stories throughout the years about how he's a bit of a dick, but he seemed quite nice to me. Yeah, because I think he said um, the only sci-fi film I've seen was two thousand one: A Space Odyssey, and it was boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, did he not get on with Kenny Baker, who plays R2? I think that's where a lot of those stories come from, yeah, about him being not, not very nice. Yeah. Um, there, There's all sorts of... I've never actually looked into it, but yeah, he's apparently not, not too big of a fan of Kenny Baker, yeah. Ah. Uh. I must admit, it is quite sad now, looking at these films, the fact that only, like, three of the big, mm. big... Well, I guess four, if you include Lando. Um, but like four of the big cast yeah, members are, st- are still alive. Yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. it's very sad looking at this now. So interesting, this bit here with um with uh, Chewie scaring the droid away, the little mouse droid. Uh, George Lucas mm-hmm. didn't want that in the film uh, because he thought it was too silly. Oh, okay. He thought it was too silly, which. But uh, it it just adds it just adds a nice bit of humanity and a bit of humor to it. It's just I like it, and, yeah. and uh, like uh, Marsha Lucas had to fight to keep that in apparently, and it's just like God, like oh, okay. how 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 I don't know. It's just it's weird when you think about it because if if she hadn't been there, how how many other classic moments would we have lost from this? 
Like how many other classic mm-hmm. lines? And apparently, apparently Luke's line of "I can't see a thing in this helmet." Apparently, apparently he ad libbed that because that was Mark Hamill actually speaking. Yeah. Like, I can't see a thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I imagine they couldn't see a thing because it's quite the eye holes aren't that kind of big. Yeah, no. they're, they're, yeah. Oh, this, this... And the family guy, they get in the lift and it plays the Imperial March, but in an elevator version. Yes, yeah. It's like, bong, 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 That happens in Lego Star Wars The Clone Wars as well. If you get if you get on one of the lifts it, oh, in cool. the uh, in either the Separatist ship or the Republic ship, it'll play like a, an elevator version of, of one of the songs. Nice. That's a good change as well, the extension to the prison block in the back there. That's subtle, but it works mm-hmm. as a nice change. That's the kind of changes I like, where it's really subtle, but it works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's another change I do like that's coming up later, where Han chases those stormtroopers, and yeah. then there's like thousands, there's hundreds of them in another room, I like and he's that, like, yeah. I like it adds to the humour. Because the original didn't make sense. It's like, what, he corners them and now they're going to chase him? Yeah. It... That, that never made sense to me. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I think both work because the, the com- it doesn't fundamentally change like the comedic timing of the scene at all, does it? It's it's still the same. Yeah. Scene. Like, it's still funny, no matter which version you, you, mm-hmm. you use. And I just think having hundreds of stormtroopers, it's just, yeah, it just adds to the humour, really. Now, apparently those guns there, they were real, and they fired blanks, I think. Yeah, no, I think there's there's raw footage of, like, them firing blanks, yeah. And, um, apparently the laser effect, it was done by hitting a metal wire, something like that. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was really tight. And this conversation was apparently improvised the whole, we're all fine thank here you, no, now, thank, thank you. How are you? I love that. I love his, I love Han's face after that as well. Like the whole shit, like, it's like is that gonna work? <laughs> I quote this all the time as well. Like if I, if I um, if I'm at work and like drop something and someone goes, "Oh, you're alright," and I go, "Yep, yeah, we're all fine. We're all fine here." No, thank you. How are you? <laughs> I quote it a lot. Mm-hmm. It's actually surprising, considering her and Harrison Ford were having an affair. Like it's a, it's surprising how little. <laughs> How little screen they share in this. They're not they're not in it together That's all that true, much yeah. in this one. Yeah, they only have like one scene together, and that's when she yeah. says um, they let us go, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny how, um, you know, in that message she says, "Help me, Obi Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope." Yet they never meet in person. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't think this conversation would contradict a Kenobi TV series, say if they did meet again before this. Yeah. yeah. Interestingly enough, though, I, I, it's either in this scene or the scene before with the, the lack of faith line. Um, they, they did cut a few lines. Mm-hmm. Um, in the original raw footage of the scene, um, they do talk about Anakin Skywalker as a separate character, I think. And that's actually the first mention. Oh, okay. That's actually the first mention of the Sith, like in anything ever, is in like a, del- oh, a deleted okay. portion of that scene, which was removed for the final cut. But they don't refer to Darth Vader being Anakin Skywalker, do they? No, I don't think so. No, yeah, they they have it as as, as a separate character. Um, I think the line the uh... line is like, oh, once you wiped out all the Jedi, including Anakin Skywalker, like they 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 basically talk about him as it, if he is another character, which is. Yeah, I wonder if. Well, yeah. But yeah, if they put that back in, if they put that back in, they could say from a certain point from of view. From a certain point of view, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vader did wipe out Anakin Skywalker from a certain point of view. <laughs> Whenever I went go to Laser Quest, um, you know the the arena that you're in, it always reminds me of the Death Star. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. For some reason, like the Death Star interiors, particularly what they're doing here when they're hiding behind the walls and you've got to 
shoot people down the corridor. Oh yeah, well when I w- yeah. it's, we were talking earlier about the whole running and gunning stormtrooper gag. I actually did that as a kid in Laser Quest. Like I actually was chasing someone <laughs> down the corridor, and uh, I turned the corner and there were loads <laughs> of people waiting for me. So it's just like the same exact same situation. But I think it's impossible not to like think of Star Wars when like in laser tag or something. Because mm-hmm. when you're running through like dark corridors yeah. with neon lights shooting lasers. Like it's yeah. Mm-hmm. Well I think in my laser quest they used the laser effects used to be red, but now they're green. And I thought, oh, I can't be a stormtrooper anymore. <laughs> yeah. No one shoots green lasers in Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. I think I mentioned this in the Phantom Menace commentary, but um, the reason the comedy works so well in this film is because it's basically their interactions and their banter that works really exactly. well, rather than just giving it to one character. Yeah, exactly. It... Like uh, lines like, um, "When you came in in here, did you have a plan for getting out?" Oh, he's the brain sweetheart. Yeah, <laughs> it's like exactly that, yeah. like, and it's not the film doesn't stop to focus on a joke either. It doesn't. The, yeah. the film doesn't stop that. It's just the banter from these. They're likable characters and they're fun characters to be around. Mhm. That one and one detail I like in the Lego game is that um, when you're in the garbage chute and you shot a laser at the wall, it did bounce it did, off yeah. back and forth. That was such a nice detail. Bamsa, I find it a shame that this wasn't part of the level. It was just a cut scene. Yeah, I always find that a shame too. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe in the it'll new be one. in the. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah, Luke goes underwater into what is essentially sewage water. Essentially, so yeah. He's either going to get a very bad stomach ache, or at worst, he's probably going to die <laughs> unless he gets his stomach pumped. Most likely. But it always made me laugh. And I think Han actually shoots at the water, and that would probably have electrified Most it. Most likely, yeah. It's like, it's, yeah. But I always find it funny. No, I'm willing to bet. Yeah, if this came out today, you know, I think Han does shoot at the water. They said, well, Han shoots at the water here, and that would have electrified it and killed Luke, but I guess Lucas doesn't, doesn't care, care about, about science. Science, yeah. fact. Ugh, shut no, I up. I know, yeah, it's just ridiculous. Uh, I bet you're a fucking blast at parties. Yeah. <laughs> I, I always find it funny uh, here, like, how the, the water's, like, up to their, just under their knees. But like it seems like mm-hmm. it seems like Luke goes really deep underwater because there's no sign of him anywhere. <laughs> yeah. uh, mm-hmm. I can't wait for the garbage monster, a Star Wars story. <laughs> <laughs> How did it get in the Empire's garbage? Well, shoot? actually, it's called the Dion Dionoga. So yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Yeah, that. it's called the Diane Olga. So you know, you're not a true fan. <laughs> <laughs> now, apparently, I could be wrong, but apparently, Mark Hamill he broke a blood vessel in his face whilst filming this I've scene. I heard that. Yeah, yeah. Was this the time of his really bad car crash? It was. Or was it, it was after? after this, and it meant they couldn't do reshoots because they they had scheduled reshoots. Oh, okay. They scheduled like a couple of reshoots, like mm-hmm. nothing major, but it was like a couple of pickups, and they couldn't do it because his car crash messed up his face that badly, which is why he does look different in Empire and Jedi. He 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 looks noticeably different. Uh... Yeah. Though Mark Hamill has said, I think. Um... It's been exaggerated a little yeah. of um, the injuries I went through. Yeah, because it... and also the stormtrooper just hit his head on he the door. He did, yeah. And they put a sound effect in for the special edition. That's brilliant. Yeah, I do. Like <laughs> I love that. that they put a sound effect in. Um, mm-hmm. so much. Yeah, I apparently that guy actually really hurt his head as well. He had to go to the hospital. Um, he had Ow. to be rushed to the hospital because, like, it, the, the, I don't know. I it's it's I don't know how it could happen, but he had like a concussion and he really hurt himself. But I'm just like, I don't know how that happened. But yeah. The stormtrooper's such a nice guy. I like how in this universe, yeah, I like how in this universe, you know, droids can 
get around without causing suspicion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's and yeah, if you're a droid in the Lego games, you don't get shot at. But the problem yeah, is you can't do anything. That's the problem. You can't actually do. Yeah. Yeah. It, only if you're R two D two. Yeah, there was R2, a really good video. <laughs> Yeah, there was a really good video I saw by Rob Ager, who um, a couple of years ago he did a video on droids in the original Star Wars, and yeah, he just commented on like you know how they're not welcome in bars, they can get around easily. Yeah, they're kind of seen as um, a lower class, something like that. It was a pretty nice video. Yeah, yeah, it's there's a lot to read into. <laughs> there's a lot to read into with that. Yeah. Yeah. Use the cop link. Oh no, I turned it off. <laughs> I turned it off. <laughs> Rape me out. Rape me out. <laughs> <laughs> Will you shut up and listen to me? Yeah. <laughs> the, the, an, another one of the Star Wars specials um, that they did. Like the Lego Star Wars specials, they did, they did the Padawan Menace in the prequels, and they did the Emp- the, oh, em- yeah. the Empire Strikes Out, which was set between this and Empire, and it was like uh, Han and Leia went nice. uh, Han and Leia went on a mission to Naboo to like get something, and like Boss Nas Boss oh. Nas was there, and uh, and the joke is he kept doing his thing and like soaking them with his with his saliva, so that was just like a waterfall of like Boss Nas. <laughs> and uh and like Luke goes to the streets and there's just a bunch of fangirls with uh Luke Skywalker lunch boxes and uh he can't get away from all the fangirls. It's, it's really funny actually. I need to watch that again. <laughs> it bugs me how Obi-Wan is able to get around pretty easily cuz I swear to god he passes so many yeah. imperial staff members <laughs> and stormtroopers. And, he... and they don't seem at all phased that a Jedi Knight, yeah. who are extinct at this point, is walking around their top headquarters. Well, is there no CCTV? <laughs> is there no cameras or anything? That's a good point, yeah. Because he does, yeah. Whose idea was it to put the track to I was beam gonna say, yeah. <laughs> here? It, it looks pretty dangerous. I noticed they kept the um, they keep the stormtrooper belts on them. Yes, they do. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, because it's where Luke gets that grappling hook from. <laughs> I wonder what else they keep in those belts. <laughs> it's like Batman's utility belt. There's a there's a batarang in there. There's a yeah. there's a bat laser. There's a bat shark repellent. <laughs> it's interesting now. Like again, Carrie Fisher in her book, and it's a story she's repeated a lot over the years. Is a uh, she asked for a bra, and George Lucas was like, "Ah, oh, there are no bras in space." So he refused. He refused. <laughs> yeah, didn't to give she her a have bra. to put on tape to stop her boobs from jiggling? Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> a lot of the time, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's like, uh, oh. George, come along, man. <laughs> Funnily enough, Scream Free um, makes a reference to oh this film because you have Carrie Fisher. Yeah. Play okay, concentrate. Playing an actress <laughs> who was up for Princess Leia, and she says, "Who gets the role? The one who sleeps with George yeah. Lucas." <laughs> it's, like, it's like Carrie Fisher's <laughs> twin sister, or something, isn't it? Or like another. It's so weird. Yeah. Scream Three is mental. Mm. Scream Three is so weird. But honestly, it's. But honestly, it's aged pretty well considering has, yeah. everything that's happened in the Hollywood industry. With sexual abuse and the Me Too movement, it's honestly aged pretty Isn't well. Isn't there a line in there that's like, "Oh, Hollywood is full of criminals whose careers are flourishing," and it's like, "Ooh, this, More or less, yeah, yeah. That's the, yeah." One of the um, one of the actors in that who's playing an actor says, um, "I didn't sleep with the producer to get killed." Yes, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Pretty much to get a part, yeah, yeah. It's um. So it's it speaks to the quality of the Scream franchise when that's the worst one, and even then it's still like a six out of ten. Yeah. Mhm. It's God, they are shit, and they the stormtroopers can't hit anything. Yeah. They're literally right there. That's basically point well... blank range there. 
<laughs> yeah, there's like a yeah, there's like a theory that um, oh, what was it that they were deliberately missing so they could let them go and be led to the rebel base. Oh, well, you know, any fan theory can explain it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you actually, if... Oh yeah, Luke just blasted the controls for the bridge. If that was done today, you'd get five-hour videos saying Luke Skywalker is Luke's a fucking stupid. idiot. Disney hates men because because uh, Luke maybe. Skywalker did it. <laughs> yeah. If you actually if you actually yeah. look closely there, um, it, it, I don't know if it's in a minute. I think we might have missed it, but Leia hits one of the stormtroopers mm. and the other one falls down. Like the laser hits one of them, but the <laughs> other one get, like reacts. That's true. Yeah. yeah. It might be here. It's blinking, you'll miss it. No, it's really blinking, you'll miss it. You have to be paying really... Yeah. You have to go through it, like, yeah. frame by frame. It's... And it's got the Wilhelm scream as well. Yeah, yeah. God, I... The Ratchet, Ratchet and Clank film that they did a couple of years ago, this... It, it was, like, it wasn't... I, I haven't seen it, but I heard it wasn't great. But there's, the, I've seen a clip where um, mm -hmm. a guy falls off a ledge, and then this guy comes running over the ledge and goes, "No, Wilhelm!" Because <laughs> he does the <laughs> Wilhelm scream, and it's like, okay, that's a brilliant joke. <laughs> mm. And apparently, this line here, the "close the blast doors," that's a special edition. It is, and it's baffling. Uh, change, yeah. That's ri that's... It, it, it works because it adds to the joke. Of it course. does. I love it. I'm surprised that wasn't there initially. That's a brilliant line. It's you know, "close the blast doors, open the blast doors, open the blast doors." Like it's a brilliant, it's really, really funny <laughs> bit. I'm surprised that wasn't there originally. Now here we come, the first ever lightsaber. Yeah. Tool. Have you seen uh, Scene 38 Reimagined on YouTube? I have, oh, yeah. yeah. I do think it's a very nice uh, redone very version. Cool, yeah, but, very um, cool. yeah, it irritates me when people say, oh, the choreography's boring, it's poor. Same, like, yeah. But, yeah. But it's basically two old enemies who've met each other again after so long. And, yeah, that's what you need in this. It's not really about the fancy choreography. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Because I, I, when. But it's yeah. um, but it's weird how literally a day ago in this timeline, Star uh, Darth Vader was kicking rebels asses <laughs> by slicing them to pieces, yeah. pushing them to the ceiling with the Force, taking the guns away from them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, when Scene Thirty Eight Reimagined came out, people were like, "Oh, they, they, this should be a replacement. No, they should incorporate this into the film." It's like, no, no. it's a cool it, it, it reimagining. It's it's right there in the title. It's a reimagining. It was really really yeah. cool, but like, I'd never want to replace it, uh, replace this because you mm -hmm. can actually see the dust. If you look closely, you can see the dust coming off the sticks that they were hitting. Like yeah, you, can you can see it, and uh, yeah, that's such a cool detail. I love the Family Guy version. <laughs> Obi-Wan! Boy, you got here just in time. <laughs> Uh-oh. Your powers are weak, old man. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I I'd blame Revenge of the Sith over this, you know. We meet again at last. When I left you, I was the learner. Now I am the master. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't surprise me if Lucas then adds, When I left you, you cut off my hands, arms, legs, and left me to burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's interesting, like... This was... I think this was a late addition, him being killed off, because originally was, yeah. he was going to survive and just remain behind on Yavin 4, but... Lucas thought, mm, I've got nothing for him to do and I don't really want him in a spaceship, so <laughs> just kill him off. It works. It does work. And, I'm, like, a, a lot of these scenes were apparently where George Lucas was at his worst in terms of stress because he got admitted to the hospital because mm -hmm. um, he was so oh, stressed. Oh, yeah, he did. And uh, there, there's footage of the actors trying to cheer him up uh, by pulling pranks mm. and stuff. Like, there's there's a, there's a whole bit where they run through the thing just then. Um, there's, there's footage of them going... 
Oh, we need to stop. We need to stop. The mic was in frame. The mic was in picture. George, what are you doing? The mic was in picture. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, George Lucas is just like, oh, Now, I have to admit, whenever I'm in a space battle on a video game, I always hum that. Um, oh, yeah. I always say, here they, I always say, here they come. Again, it's from Family Guy, isn't it? It's the, dun, dun, yeah, it is. Oh, you, you, you can't not do it. You have to do it. Yeah. And, um, oh, God, Luke says, I got him, I got him. In here, it's great, kid. Don't get cocky. Here, it's family guy it's great kid don't get penis <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> oh yeah this 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 is awesome this this whole thing is pure star wars it's great yeah but if they want to trap them to their rebel base why are they firing at them yeah hmm right they'll make a five hour video <laughs> essay on why this film is awful <laughs> And why everyone's in denial about how good it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love that the sequels brought back that um, that seventies uh, kind of aesthetic for the computer screens and the, in on the targeting guns. Yeah, that's really true. Cool. Yeah, it's amazing how they've got lasers, but their computer graphics are terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah, if I had a criticism of this, it kind of looks like the Falcon's not moving. It does, yeah. When we cut to like the exterior <laughs> yeah. shots, but um, yeah, it's still a good, it's still a good space battle. But I'd say the best one is probably the Death Star battle in Return of the Jedi. Oh, I think so, yeah. Especially because like the the, the Falcon comes right up to the camera there, and it looks amazing. It like does, it, it yeah. looks so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you because uh, full fat videos they put it best about Return of the Jedi climax. You know, it feels like everyone's doing their part. Yeah, here. yeah, absolutely. And yeah, one climax. There's like three climaxes, but one wouldn't um, succeed without the other, exactly, and it's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm always surprised by how short this film is. It's only two hours, and uh, we've only got like twenty minutes left of it. Yeah, I think. And uh, yeah, it was very well. We do, yeah. I. Yeah, I'm sure this is the shortest Star Wars film. I think film. it is, yeah. It's paced extremely well. Uh, it, it, the pacing mm -hmm. is brilliant. Mm -hmm. So these shots of R2-D2, like the intercutting there between 3PO and on the floor, those shots from R2-D2 were meant to be in the Death Star bit from earlier when they're like, oh... When they're hacking into ah. the computer, because if you look behind him, you can see the Death Star like lights, and again, that's another example of things being saved in the edit. That that nice bit of comedy there was <laughs> added in the edit, uh, and it, you know it's just it's brilliant. Yeah, it, it's. And if you look closely, you can see David Prowse's eyes uh, behind you the mask. You can, yeah, yeah. But you can forgive that because you know, Vader is still a human. Under oh there. yeah, I really like that detail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, according to IMDb, the only time Han Solo speaks to R2-D2 directly is in Return of the Jedi when they're at the shield generator and he says, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, actually, yeah. Which is odd, considering yeah. he's like, yeah, uh, yeah, that is different, yeah. That's, that's weird to think about. So this scene here, it very much seems like it's setting up a love triangle between these three. Because cause Han goes... A little bit, Han yeah. Han goes, oh, you think a princess and a guy let me No. And there's that awkward look. And it's like, <laughs> that's clear. That's a sign. Well, that's um... a sign that they hadn't planned for the whole <laughs> brother-sister thing. That really is a clear sign of it. 
Well, there is kind of that in Return of the Jedi as well, but it's more of a misunderstanding yeah. on Han's part because he doesn't know. Obviously, they're related. Yeah, exactly. So, Whereas yeah. this is much mm-hmm. more like you're supposed to believe that they both <laughs> like her. And there's a bit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like this this guy in a minute this guy this guy's job who stands on the top of that tower thing and like <laughs> that guy must have fun he stands up there all day and just yeah. look, watches ships come in and goes hmm. <laughs> yeah but apparently that thing he's got apparently it shows if they're friend or enemy oh interesting yeah Nice poncho, Luke. Oh, yeah, he is wearing a poncho. <laughs> now, interesting. You know, we're we're getting ready for the big battle here. Most modern films I can think of would spend a bit of time like here, like downtime almost. Like there, there'd be yeah. a gap, but this we re- we basically go straight into it. There's a little bit of where they're discussing the plans and everything, but we apart we basically go straight into. Let's go. Let's you know. It reminds me a bit of um, it reminds me a bit of the Avengers, the first one. You know. Yeah. And it's quite similar here. You've got Phil Coulson who dies. Here you've got Obi Wan who dies, and then a bit of downtime, and then the final Good battle point. kicks yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, that's very, it's a very similar structure actually. The whole because uh, in Avengers, obviously they all sort of they're all a bit sad, and they're like, oh, we, let's let's go, and the, you know, and then we have that montage of them getting ready, and then yeah, fine, fine. And once battle. again, the um, and once again, the comedy comes from the interaction between these unique characters. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And once again, these computer graphics <laughs> are terrible. <laughs> I like how this guy mispronounces Leia as well. Oh yeah, he says Leia, Princess... something like that. Princess Leia. Leia. <laughs> There's a lot of, in these in these original three films, obviously, because they are of that era of like great British actors popping up in these. There's a lot of uh, yeah. there's a lot of sort of very very British. Well, Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando in Superman, he mispronounces <laughs> Krypton. Krypton. He says Krypton. Krypton. <laughs> I've seen behind the scenes footage for that, and he's reading his lines off cue cards. Oh yeah, he didn't care. He didn't care. And yeah, the, yeah, the stories you hear about him, like, oh, he's the greatest actor and one of the most influential actors yeah, of the twentieth yeah. century, and he's reading off cue cards. I'm gonna quote Mister Sun. I think he got. I'm gonna quote Mister Sun. I think he got a million dollars or something. Oh yeah, for two weeks. Two work. million, I think. Two million, I think it was. That's two it. Yeah. Million. And uh, I'm gonna quote Mister Sunday movies here, but uh, Brando was a bad bloke. Bear bloke Brando, um, uh, and yeah, there's that wonderful interview with Christopher Reeve, isn't there? Where he, where um, the interview was like, "Oh, was it cool working with Marlon Brando?" And he's like, "I've got to be honest, no." <laughs> he he didn't. He, he, Christopher Reeve's like, just like, no, he didn't really care. He just took the two million and he ran, and he just didn't, didn't yeah. put any effort in. Well, I've seen the interview when he was asked about why did you refuse the Oscar for The Godfather. And why did you think people were upset at you? Mm. And he actually said such a really good quote that I think a lot of people should live by. He said, I think they're upset because I disrupted their fantasy with a bit of reality. Oh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, quite similar to the Avengers. They Very they much, split yeah. up, and you think um, uh, I think it's Iron Man who you think is all alone because Hulk's gone. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, Hawkeye's out of it, and Thor's yeah. crash landed. And here, obviously, yeah. Han's going. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised he says that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I thought he didn't believe in it. Yeah. Now it was uh, was Biggs was Luke meeting Biggs here? Was this a special edition? It was, yeah. It's a Change deleted as well, scene yeah. put back in. But interestingly, ah. you'll notice at one point a silhouetted man walks in front of the frame, and that's to cover up a cut mm-hmm. that they had to do because in the original deleted scene, 
they um the pilot goes oh i i fought with your father if you're half as good as him you'll do all right and they remove that to remove oh. reference to anakin skywalker and obviously because it because it's a straight because oh, wow. it's a straight <laughs> scene they couldn't hide the cut so that's why if you mm-hmm. watch a man does walk in front of the frame and it's to hide that edit oh my god yeah wow. <laughs> and they, the original scenes on youtube i think but once you notice the cut, I yeah. See. Once you notice the cut, you'll kind of, you'll kind of, yeah. So it's here. So is it this pilot who says it about yeah, Anakin yeah. Skywalker? Or it's is it... him. There you go. Yeah, there, there we go. Because he just cussed him, saying, "Eh, hey, you'll do you'll all right." Go, all right, yeah. But in the original, he's like, "I fought with your father. I fought with Anakin Skywalker. If you're half as good as him, you'll do all right." Like, and it's um, mm. yeah, and it's they. It's interesting they removed that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because um, yeah, because I think the first time we hear the word Anakin Skywalker is in Return of the Jedi, but obviously it was in Empire when they changed some of the dialogue with Vader in the Empire. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah. Because they mentioned that as being Darth Vader's original name. So what 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 I've ne- th- my problem with this this is like one of the few kind of big problems I have with this, and it's not really that big, but the fact that yeah. like Biggs is built up there in the special edition as well, like you know Biggs is his mm. best friend. We never get a reaction shot from Luke when he dies, and that's always kind of that's true. Yeah. Even, yeah. Plus also um one of these pilots is called Wedge, played by Dennis Lawson, and he's Ewan McGregor's uncle. Ewan McGregor's isn't uncle, he? yeah, yeah. Wedge yeah, because he went to see this film. He said, we went to go see Star Wars, the original, to go see Uncle Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Den- Dennis Lawson. He wrote yeah. a book on... He wrote a book on acting, Dennis Lawson, and I had to read that for you. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Now, was it him that came back for uh, for Rise of Skywalker? Was it Wedge that came back there? Um, I can't remember, but he, he, he's back in Return of the Jedi as well, yeah, I can't recall if he's in Empire. I, I believe I don't think he's in Empire. He's definitely in Jedi, and then in Rise of Skywalker, like yeah. there's a cut, there's a really quick shot of him going, "Oh, nice flying, Lando." Uh, and I remember <laughs> seeing that in the cinema, and, and nobody else around me really picked up on it. Um, no one, because yeah. it's such a quick thing, and like no one now, registered it. But yeah. Now be honest, when you're ever in an X-wing in a Star Wars oh, video yeah. game. Be honest. Who says red five standing by? Red four standing by. I definitely by. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what I love about this space battle is that um, it does go on, but then again, World War Two battles in in the sky they want they'd go on for oh, ages. Oh yeah, they went on for yeah. And you know there'd be mass communication between the pilots. You know they're not just going in and shooting at it. They've got a strategy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And didn't they bring back the gold leader for um, Rogue One, but with CGI footage? Yes, it was like um, it was archive footage, yeah. And uh, I thought that was so cool at the time because it's really subtle yeah. as well. It's it's really subtly done. Mhm. And also the original Red Five, we know his backstory in Rogue One. Yeah. Uh, I think the Red Leader says, "Um, Red Five, stay close. Where you going?" And he gets um shot down yeah, by TIE Fighters, does, yeah. which is why Luke is now Red 5. <laughs> I'm so glad we know that. <laughs> so these these special edition edition editions <laughs> are um are uh, <laughs> they 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 are cool, but it's a shame that like shots that folks worked really hard on are, are, are gone. I think yeah. they are really cool. They do mm-hmm. definitely kind of speed up the pace of it. It's just it's unfortunate that they're replacing shots that folks worked really hard on, and that's kind of what bugs me about it. But yeah. they are cool. They they do look mm-hmm. really dynamic and cool. Calling the fat guy Porkins. Porkins. That's just mean. <laughs> uh, there's a there's a great sketch on YouTube from about ten years ago where it's like uh, a guy at ILM's like, "Oh, Mr. Lucas, yeah, we're just finishing up those Blu-ray changes you asked for. Uh, oh, you've got some more. Oh, okay." Uh, Change Porkins' name to Healthykins and give him a CGI celery stick. <laughs> okay. Uh, repl- <laughs> g- give um... Han Solo a mustache. Okay. Uh, <laughs> re- 
Replace Obi Wan Kenobi with Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame that in the Battlefront games they don't add dialogue like that. You don't add a pilot going, "I'm going in, cover me, Porkins." Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. I, I say that all the time when I'm in an X-wing. Yeah, same. I I say as well when I'm about to crash. I, and um. I think Porkins dies because he's like, I'm having a bit of trouble here. I say that when I'm about to crash <laughs> and I can't avoid it. I'm like, eh, having a bit of trouble here. <laughs> I, I, I always go like, we're passing through the magnetic field. <laughs> yeah. And like, and if I make a, um, if I make a quick escape, like in Battlefront, if I like, I'm nearly dead and then I, I manage to survive in an X-Wing, I'm like, I got a little cut, but I'm okay. <laughs> like, it's so quotable. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. I like that guy as well at the control thing with the massive moustache. <laughs> the massive grey moustache and the black eyebrows. He looks like a cartoon character. <laughs> Try spinning like your dad did. Well, <laughs> That's a good it is trick. a good trick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's actually on YouTube, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's um, audio of an audience reaction watching this for the first time back in 77. And uh, there's oh, just wow. massive cheers when the Death Star blows up. Um, and like when, yeah, when Han is. comes back, people I mean, did this nuts. get I um, mean, did this get a standing ovation at its premiere or something? I'm sure it would have done, I could yeah. Be wrong. I mean, it, the thing is, yeah. nobody had seen anything like this before. That was the thing. Nobody, like... That's true. It, yeah, it, it was. It wasn't just sci-fi. It was. It was sci-fi fantasy, and there was there was Honest... a bite to it. Like that. It's just. It's brilliant, and it appealed to all ages. Mm. I've never been to a film where they uh, where the audience applauded at the end. I mean, the only one I can think of is Day of the Doctor. Yeah, obviously surrounded by enthusiastic Doctor Who fans. Yeah. they all stood up and applauded at the end. I, yeah, that happened to me too. I mean, yeah. even a. Even at films like Avengers Endgame or, um, you know, the last Harry Potter film, I can't remember anyone standing up and applauding. I, you know, I kind of wanted to, but I thought, oh, if I'm going to be the only person, best not. <laughs> I, I, be, I When I went to see The Amazing Spider-Man, people clapped at the end. <laughs> of all, and I, yeah, oh, really? like there was this, That's a bit of an it odd, is film, an odd to film, isn't it? To clap at the end. But that, that was one of the worst experiences of my life, though, because um, the film started and five minutes into the film the audience was still talking and shouting and fighting. Like, they were lit lit literal fighting. Oh, and our old cinema, where I'm mm. from, is, is gone now. But at the time, it was just... Not the staff weren't doing anything. Uh, the film had started. Mm -hmm. Nobody even knew the film had started. And it took some brave mm -hmm. soldier at the back to just shout, Shut the fuck up! <laughs> and uh, that worked. <laughs> and then the fact that that audience applauded at the end is like... <laughs> It's just it's bizarre, mm. it's really bizarre, and the, like you said, a day of the Doctor as well. Like, I, I, I'll never forget Capaldi's eyes appearing in that, and everyone just went nuts. Everyone just went insane. I just remember a huge gasp when we heard that. Um, you know, I really think yes, you might. Yes, yeah. Because <laughs> I think everyone instantly knew who it was. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, for my birthday a couple of years ago, I got a replica uh, Red 5 helmet that Luke Skywalker wears in this. Oh, it's nice. really cool. It's a Black Series one, so um, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's it's really cool. The only time you see Vader in a spaceship because mm, obviously yeah. as anakin he's in a spaceship a lot of times but yeah this is the only time he's yeah, in exactly, it yeah they're trying spinning it's a good <laughs> trick i want someone should re-edit the film where um 
to try and shake off the TIE fight as Luke tries spinning, and uh, <laughs> Vader's like, hmm, the Force is strong with this one. <laughs> and then go in, just impact it on the surface. <laughs> Rest. Is it another thing I quote as well is when um, Vader goes, What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I remember once when I watched this as a kid, um, one of the um, Imperial officers says, we count 30 rebel ships. And I actually did count, oh, how many survived? And I think only five of them yeah. survived. <laughs> yeah, which is odd because the, cause yeah. the Battle of Yavin 4 is like treated as this, as this big heroic moment for everyone and this big legendary day. And it's like, Jesus, half of them died. Yeah, because it's like... <laughs> yeah, because it's treated as... Because um, it's so big that it's that the years in Star Wars, in the Star Wars universe, are based around yes, it. Yes, they because are, you've yeah. got BBY, before Battle of You've got Evan. BBY and ABY, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wonder why that is. I think it's literally just because, yeah. like, in Star Wars fandom, it's easier to say that, oh, the, the first film, and this was the big event of the first film, I guess. Yeah. Like... Yeah, I guess so. Interesting that... Because in the special edition of Empire, they've corrected R two D 2s panels. So like, because in the original they turned black mm-hmm. because of the green, uh, the blue screen, and they corrected that in the special edition. They they mm-hmm. color corrected them to be blue again. Interestingly, they've not done that here. R 2s panels are still black in this. Interesting that they haven't tried to correct it. Mm-hmm. Use the force, Luke. <laughs> the forks? No, the, the force. force, Luke. <laughs> Use the forks. Oh. It's amazing, and like John Williams' score definitely sounds different in this than it does in in all the rest of the saga. It sounds a lot, sort of. Yeah. I, uh, cheaper is the mm. wrong word, but like there's, it sounds like there's not enough. There's yeah, not, I don't want to say cheap. Yeah, but, but I don't really know how to describe it. it. It feels like there's less money spent on it than there would be. Like it's less sort of, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's really hard to describe that how different it kind of feels. It's difficult. Mm-hmm. I love it though. I love it. You know, John Williams has never done a bad score. Yeah. But... And I think Darth Vader, who escapes here, is, um, I think that was a late addition in case George Lucas wanted to do a sequel or something. Yeah, because, th- well, that's the thing about this film. It's very sort of open-ended. Like, it could absolutely be a one-and-done thing. Yeah. It's a very much a one-and-done yeah, thing. Yeah, it's but... a very self-contained film. It's probably the most self-contained film out absolutely, of all of them. Yeah. Because it doesn't set up a sequel. Uh, they destroy the thing that they need to, and that's exactly, it. Yeah. They're rewarded for it. It the very end. much leaves it open for a sequel, but also that like it closes everything off. Like it's it could have very much been a one and done thing, and uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know the music here is fantastic. Like the build up, it's so cool. Yeah. Like ah, oh, the ah, oh, these shots are amazing. I mean, the Lego version's funnier because like it shows the Death Star rumbling and Grand Moff Tarkin yeah. going like, <laughs> and then it blows yeah. up. <laughs> Those poor people on the desk. I know, star. yeah. How many of those people just sat at desks and did data They're entry? They're just doing their job. And you just killed them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, robot chicken. Papa, papa, palpatine. 
Vader, that was my favorite Sith. <laughs> huh? What do you mean they blew up the Death Star? <laughs> Who's they? What the hell's an aluminum falcon? <laughs> Now get your seven foot two ass man ass <laughs> back here. I'm gonna tell everyone a cry baby you're about pot of honor or panda bear, whatever the hell her name was. <laughs> oh gosh, she's crying. <laughs> well the Simpsons calls those R2 and 3 po the yeah. game robots of Star Wars. Was it the the I badass. Mean, yeah, considering how concerned he is about R2. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. badass robots from Battlestar Galactica versus the gay robots from Star Wars. <laughs> Stop, please. Save me, R2. Oh, you stupid little tramp. You're so boring. I hate you. <laughs> ah, this is. Ah, I love this yeah, music. Same, yeah. Every time I don't, yeah. I remember when I graduated, this theme was actually playing through my I was head. About to say, yeah, every time I'm at some kind of event or like some award show, I'm mm. always playing this music in my head. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, that was a weird edit because Chewie roared there and they all turned around. <laughs> and was that him saying turn around? There's a wonderful video on YouTube where it's like um the end of Star Wars but with realistic audio and everything's just silent and then you just mm. Chewie opens his mouth and you just hear <laughs> and that's the only <laughs> audio and like the the awkward sort of smiles because like in reality there's just be silence here it's like just awkward like signs of saliva in their mouths and stuff and then right at the end <laughs> from Chewie it's, it's so funny <laughs> uh Ah, Luke and Han are given medals. Where's the medal for <laughs> but Chewie? Not Chewie. Oh. <laughs> he got it. Rise of Skywalker. Sky we'll get to that. <laughs> Here, Chewie, I got you a medal. <laughs> wink, <laughs> wink, <Aye>. wink, <laughs> wink. Oh. I hate that it's so much. It's frustrating, yeah. I, I, I mean, uh, it was near the end of the film, and I just, I was tempted so much to just shout, "Oh fuck yeah, off!" Yeah, it's very much <laughs> in the yeah. cinema. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I was respectful, I didn't say that, I was just like, oh, God. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, misjudged, I think that was, it's, yeah. But, I mean, we'll get to that in five films time, A couple yeah. weeks, yeah. Yep. Yeah. But, yes, that was Star Wars, or Star Wars Episode Four, or Star Wars A New mm. Hope, or whatever the hell you want to call it. It holds up, yep. it really holds up, um, it's just... One of the greatest films ever yeah. made. I could watch this any time and never get bored Same. of it. And it really is. It's, um, yeah, it, it's just because of its simplicity as well. Like it, it's, it's just a pure, fun, good versus evil story. There's no... Yeah. It, it, it's just such a... a... Gilbert Taylor. Gilbert Taylor doesn't get enough credit for his work on this. He's very much glossed over mm. by a lot of produ promotional materials. Oh, John Dykstra. John Dykstra, yeah. Went on to many, many yeah. things. Uh, mm -hmm. Paul Hirsch, Marsha Lucas, and Richard Chew. Yeah, Chu. there's Marsha Lucas. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All, and again, all of these people are so instrumental in the... in in the like, Ralph, Ralph this McQuarrie. This was filmed at um, Pinewood, wasn't it? Yes, it was, yeah. A lot of it, yeah. A lot mm -hmm. of... And again, this was the start for a lot of, like... It sounds so weird to say, but like visual effects people who are now kind of household names, like um, John Dykstra and um, R Richard Edland and S Stuart Freeborn, and like all these people, uh, yeah, it, it's it's brilliant. Rick Baker, God, Rick Baker, yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's 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 fantastic. Yeah, Richard Edland, Der Dennis Murin. It's amazing that these people are so sort of recognized for their work and mm -hmm. it is such a simple film it, it's i you'd I have to be pretty you'd have to be pretty boring you'd, you'd have to be a boring bastard not or, to be entertained by this or i'll basically not be a fan of sci-fi i'd probably say even, even then yeah. though, like like even if you aren't a fan of sci-fi yeah. i'd still say you'd get something out of this because it is just such a it, it encompasses so many different genres um it's yeah. so mm -hmm all-encompassing and it's it's just wonderful really it's um it is a wonderful film and yeah. i don't think it'll ever 
even in this special edition form that's very controversial and i do mm-hmm. think it hurts the film but even in this form like it will live on it will it will it will forever it, yeah. it reminds me a lot of the wizard of oz in many ways um Mm-hmm. And oh, here's the. Didn't know Leslie Schofield was in yeah. this. <laughs> and here's the special edition credits. Oh yeah. Gary A. Rizzo. Rick McCallum. Rick McCallum, yeah. Well, that's the thing. The special editions were a test run for the prequels, weren't they? They were a test. They were, yeah. They were mm-hmm. test CGI for the prequels, essentially, and they the prequels reused a lot of the models. Every scene has a digital effect <laughs> in it. <laughs> It's so dense. <laughs> it's so dense. <laughs> Every single frame has a digital effect. Uh, and that's become a meme, but like... <laughs> mm. Yeah. It's, um... Say... I mean, the film speaks for itself, you know. It is a masterpiece in film... Uh, a landmark in film history. And... Um, it really does. It is certainly hard... It certainly had an impact. I'd say both good and bad. Absolutely, <laughs> and I know a lot of people roll their eyes at Star Wars these days just because of how much of a franchise it is and how all-encompassing it is. But yeah. many, so many filmmakers were influenced by this, like so, like just this, yeah, exactly. just this first film. So many people have have mm-hmm. yeah have loved it for years, and it, it's it will live beyond any of the other films. I think, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I hope you I hope you all enjoyed the contra, everyone. Um, next week we will mm-hmm. be continuing with the original trilogy for a commentary to the Empire Strikes Back. Um, so yeah, join us for, the, uh, for that at the same time next week. Uh, in the meantime, go check out Isaac's channel, and we shall see you next time. Bye bye.